अमित तोफो नमस्ते मेरी कहानी मेरी जुबानी तीसरा अध्याय थर्ड चैप्टर एंड एज आई मैंशन इन द लास्ट एपिसोड आई लॉस माई फादर इन द मंथ ऑफ मार्च एंड आफ्टर दैट आई लिव फॉर शावलन टेम्पल एंड दिस वॉज इन टू थाउजेंड एंड वन एंड आई एड मैंशन अबाउट द डिफिकल्टीज ऑफ स्टेइंग इन द शावलन area and training there <clears throat> so as i told you in the last episode i spoke to my mother and i came back and i stood in front of the shaolin temple and i realized that this was the place where i wanted to be this was a thing which i wanted to do and that moment changed my life so i went back to the school and i started training really hard and one day i told my shifu through a translator that uh, i want to train inside the shaolin temple because master xiang jun was a head of shaolin temple secular disciples union which was 100 meters ahead of shaolin temple it was a it was a school a traditional old school like a temple for the secular disciples in shaolin temple there are basically two sets warrior monks and secular disciples shi da yang Uh, was a head of the warrior monk reserve team at that point of time so my shifu also a very very good friend of shida yang and he spoke to him and then one friday he told the translator sent kanishka and he took me to shaolin temple and there i met the legendary the legend of the shaolin temple the late honorable abbot of shaolin temple shi sushi i don't know what shi fu spoke to him but i know he was something very big that man and after uh, shi fu spoke and the translator told me that you know what shi fu has done for you i said i don't know he said you will come to shaolin temple every thursday and friday and saturdays in the morning and you would train with the disciple of shi sushi shi sushi as everyone knows he met with an accident and he had no legs he used to sit in wheelchair and there's a photograph also today i posted that was my first day and later i came to know that he's a big master and was the biggest opportunity i could get because shi sushi was also direct master of grand master shi daya so i used to go to the shaolin temple every thursday and friday and saturday morning to study with the instructor of shi sushi and shi sushi used to sit there and used to watch me the form which i trained there for the first time in my life was called the sha hong chuan that was a form i learned in the shaolin temple so three days i used to train in shaolin temple secular disciples and three days i used to train in the shaolin temple and one day you know my master told me do you know you are the first indian who came to study in the shaolin temple and my thing was the first indian was damo he said yes bodhi dharma was a founder of chan buddhism in shaolin temple bodhi dharma gave the two sutras to the shaolin temple the yi jing jing and the sishui jing and the 18 lohan qigong the 18 lohan qigong was mixed with the martial arts of the shaolin temple to create shaolin kung fu many people have misconception that bodhi dharma was a founder of shaolin kung fu i will clear this in chapter 4 next time but i'll continue with my story so at that point of time we used to get visa only for 3 months one month valid stay so i extended my stay and i stayed for two months after that i didn't have any money i came back to india when i came back to india i had no money so every day i would train with my first disciple ashok chobe who is apparently recording right now for me we would go to nandan kan park every day in the morning and we would train and we had no money i didn't know what to do because i had no money in my bank account there was nothing in me so one fine day there was ashok came to me and said that 
I have a client for you. I think that boy used to see us training in the park. Gaurav, I think was his name. That was my first student and I think it was 500, 600. I don't remember the exact amount of money for one month. And that's how I got my first student. And every three days I think I used to train him. But I soon realized that two months is not enough for me. I didn't have the money to even eat that, eat food, you know. If I had to live alone, there was nothing in me. And I wanted to learn Kung Fu more. And I wanted to go back and for that I needed money to go back and study. So, uh, as you know that since childhood I had grown up seeing Kung Fu films and Kung Fu documentaries. It was another dream of mine that I wanted to anchor and perform Kung Fu in television. So I asked my mother that, can you please help me to get an appointment with the uh, DG Doordarshan? And my mother said, I will not help you in anything. It is a decision you have taken in your life and you have to do it. So I begged and I requested my mother. I said, please get me an appointment. At least that is one last thing I want you to do for me. So she said, but what do you want to do? I said, not now. Give me three months. So I scripted one show called The Synergy of Martial Arts. It was a 26 episode show which was aired on DD Bharti for the first time in the Indian history, a martial arts show. I had no experience of television. I scripted, I anchored, I performed in those 26 episodes. I got all my teachers from India to perform in that series. And at that point of time, I earned from the 26 episodes. My mother thought that I'm gonna invest in bank because I am an MBA. I took all that money and I went back to Shaolin <laughs> to train. Zero balance in my account. My mother was, you know, it's like, are you crazy? You know, and because my father, before he died, he told me one thing, which I still date, I believe he said, son, remember, knowledge is your fixed deposit, not money. So till today, I am, I feel I'm a student. I learn till today with all my masters. I have not stopped going to Shaolin Temple. So I went back to Shaolin for three months. I <clears throat> trained there and a very uh, emotional story happened, which I need to tell you. That in the first time when I went there, I met two Americans, I will not name them, and uh, they were my Kung Fu brothers there. And apparently we were in touch when I came back, we were in touch with uh, email Yahoo at that point of time. And they said that, you know, they found a very traditional Kung Fu master, very, very traditional Kung Fu master next to the river. Uh, and they said that we are shifting it there. Apparently it was cheaper and they wanted me to join. And since I had only studied that too in a group in Shaolin and uh, in, in the Secular Disciples and uh, I, I was studying with the assistant of Sushi, uh, these two boys said that the master will train you directly and I got carried away. And so we decided that I'm going to come to Shaolin area and there was a small uh, roadside hotel because now it's all barricaded. It, People who have been to Shaolin Temple, they know it's all barricaded and you have to... At that point of time, it was the way to the Shaolin, there were shops, 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 food, clothes, food, clothes and little inns where you can stay. So, I I got myself one room when I reached there. Okay, but then the most important interesting part of the story is, at that time there was no through check-in. I did not know that. I, I, I lost my luggage on the way. And I lost all the money because I had packed it inside. I just had $100 with me when I arrived. I had no bag, nothing with me. I was nervous. I didn't know what to do, you know. But there was nothing I could do. So I just went ahead. I, I thought that I'll speak to the master about it. Because I thought the Americans, those two guys are going to come and pick me up. So I reached there. I gave that lady because she knew me. Uh, from last time, I would eat food at her restaurant uh, in the evening sometime. So I exchanged Chinese money from her 
and she gave me the room. I had no clothes with me. I had, I bought some clothes for myself, and I was just left with around twenty dollars. And the next day, in the morning at seven o'clock, I came out and I was standing outside my hotel. That I won't call it a hotel. Like a, it's a very small. Um, I, I know you can understand what I'm trying to say, and they didn't come. I there was no internet there. They didn't come. I didn't know what to do, and I was in tears because I had no money. I didn't know anyone. These guys didn't come till twelve. I was on the road. The only place I knew was my first master, Shi Heng Jun, and I started walking towards Shaolin Temple Secular Disciples. I must have walked three hundred meters. My head was down. I didn't know. I was blank, zoned out. I was walking, and then suddenly a car a car stopped, and there was a honk, wow, like that. And I got startled, and a sound came from there. Uh, as not many people know, my home name, my parents called me Chotu. So in China, I'm I'm called by Chotu. That's what, that's what my name is. Someone someone shouted from there, Chotu. I was like, who knows? Who know me here? You know, someone called my name. It was my master, Shi Heng Jun, and it was like God sent. And he looked at me. I looked at him. I was so ashamed. For the first time in my life, I had a feeling of betrayal, that I betrayed my master, who loved me, because of those two guys. But the onus and the responsibility goes to me because it was a choice which I took, and. I couldn't speak anything. He saw tears in my eyes. He made me sit in the car. He took me to the Shaolin Temple, to the school. He got the translator, and then I told him that I lost the money. I lost the bag. I don't have the money. He took me to the school. He gave me the same room which I had. He said to the translator, "Don't worry. He'll speak to the airport." And he said, "Tell him not to worry. I couldn't recover my bag. I couldn't recover my money. My shifu taught me." For two months, for free, not a single penny charged to me, and I had no words. And for me, till today, I treat him like my god. And from there onwards, a second chapter of my story started. My personal relationship with my shifu, how he accepted me as his own son, and and also, I'm going to tell you because from chapter four. my story will become very funny and it will have a lot of moments of laughter and happiness in this because i met my best friend from france i used to call him momo and this was a time i shifted to fawang temple da fawang temple to train kung fu and those stories are so close to my heart and that i'm going to tell you but there is a lesson to all the young ones i want to tell from this story that never lie to your teacher always respect because in our indian culture in our shastra it is saying guru gobind doi khade kaake lagu paaye bali hari jao guru ke gobind dio bataaye that the student was standing in front of a teacher and god and he asked the god kiske samne mujhe jhukna hai who should i bow down first to the god replied Bow down to the teacher first because he's the one who showed you the path towards me. The only aim a good teacher has is that the student become better than him, and that is something I have learned from my teacher. So, all of you, take care and be safe, and don't forget to listen to the chapter number four because it is very interesting. Thank you so much, Anami Tofu. Thank you.